Hey Libra, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for December 2018. And Libra, before we jump in, I just want to remind you that the new blog is up at stormygrace.com so you can head over there, check out all the major astrological transits and aspects that are happening for December 2018 and all the way through 2019 as well, they'll be going up. And if you missed anything in November, those are up as well, so feel free to check it out, okay? Also, you've still got just a couple days left to take advantage of that 45,000 subscriber gift, so make Make sure you do that it's in the description box down below okay all right Libra so first things first as we're coming into December which is a month where I really think we get to take a deep breath we get to drop our shoulders down for our from our ears for just a, a little bit before we get launching into our new creative things for 2019 but here in December as we're coming into December Uranus is retrograde but it's moved back into the energy of Aries which is just your opposite so this is the energy of relationships so so with Uranus being here, he's already been here for seven years. So you have seen some massive changes likely in your relationships, as well as not just romantic relationships, but business relationships. Maybe you've taken promotion or something like that. But Uranus here, because we're coming in in retrograde, what I would advise you to do is look back over this last seven years, right? In this last seven years, where have you made progress? Where did you start out seven years ago and where are you at? today. What does that look like? Recognize your progress because I really think you have to see where you've been so you know where you're going, right? Because you see some places you don't want to go anymore, right? You see some things where you're like, oh, I should have stopped and smelled those roses, right? <laughs> so you definitely have some perspective there. Now, the other thing I would tell you to keep in mind from now until March is what attitudes, actions, and behaviors do you still have? Are you still using and working with that are actually standing in the way of you having successful relationships? One of the big one for Libra energy is is codependent energy, right? You have to make sure that you're not losing your voice. You are our first energy that is really like smack dab there in how we begin conscious chosen relationships. So you have to make sure that you're not giving too much or losing your voice, right? You've got to make sure that Libra still has a voice in every single relationship that you're encountering. That's really important, no people pleasing. So look back. Look at what you've got going on that may still be standing in the way so that you can tidy that whole situation up, think outside of the box, do it a little bit different, and move forward. All right. Now, right here on the second of the month, we've got Venus coming into Scorpio along with Mercury, who's also up there, but Mercury is direct. Venus, thank God, she's the ruling planet, is not, right? <laughs> So this is all in your second house, just in that next door neighbor space. Now with Venus and Mercury up here, because Mercury is still direct for just a little bit, you know, this is the second house for you. So it still may not be the exact right time to go make some major purchase or something yet. Cause Venus is definitely, Venus is home in the second house. She likes it over there. She's like, oh yes, let's go spend some money, right? So you could definitely have that on the brain, but I think just give it a couple days so that Mercury can come direct because just here on the sixth mercury comes direct right there in scorpio with venus then you're a lot more online the energy is cleared up communication is clearer your thinking is clearer so if you have a big purchase you want and or need to make you can definitely go do that because keep in mind that the second house is the house of first of all how you earn money not money that's just coming to you it's how you earn money so you have a skill a talent uh, whatever, and you're using it to earn money. Also, how you spend money, how you regard your physical world. Do you need new things in your physical world? Um, with Mercury here, because um, information is traveling more forward, it's at a more direct energy, Keep in mind too that Mercury's just come direct, so everything might not be perfectly forward yet, but he's getting there, okay? But with these things being direct, it really does help you read the fine print, the warranties, the liabilities that could be coming up on any kind of purchase that you're making. Now, I also think that this is a great energy for you to go and negotiate more money. If you're looking for that raise, if you're looking for a bonus, if you have a product you're wanting to put out, you're wanting to adjust or raise or lower your prices, this is a wonderful energy for that as well. Anything that has to do with your value is really full steam ahead at this point. 
Now on the 7th, we've got a new moon happening in Sagittarius. And on the 12th, just behind that, we've got Mercury making a move into Sagittarius. So what we have is that this third house area gets very, very busy for you. It gets very active, which is great because the third house is an active house. So with the new moon, the new moon says that we get to plant our seeds of intention to begin something new here. We're starting something new. So you don't know what it's going to be. You're just planting the seeds and then gently tending to it, okay? Now, being in Sagittarian energy, one of the things that makes me think is that you have information you want to travel, right? You have a conversation happening with someone who's maybe foreign or different than you. In the third house, this is a teaching and studying house. Are you studying something? Did you get a professor, right? Have you signed up for a course or you're looking to sign up? for a course in 2019 so you're studying or are you the one who's teaching right and is it online? Is it some way in some technological space? The third house is phenomenal for writing, so I'm telling if you've been thinking about writing that book, write the damn book. Write the book. Begin the book. Please share your story with us. This is a time where we've got to share our, our experience, strength, and hope with each other so that we can help people move forward. It might seem like, oh my God, that's old information to me, and it could literally be saving someone else's life so that they know they're not alone. So anything in your communication zone, networking, right? Do you need to get people to come to your website? Do you need to update your website? Any of those things that put you in a networking, sharing information zone are really gonna be in your favor over this next four weeks, okay? On the 22nd, we've got a full moon happening in Cancer. Now this is lovely because it's actually at the top of your chart. So right up top here, I'm telling you, you want to have that conversation about getting a promotion. You want to have that conversation with you and your, your own boss about getting a promotion. Maybe it's a great time to do that. But with the full moon up here in the 10th house, one of the things that I also think of is, first of all, the full moon says that something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So there's going to be a shift here, right? But with the full moon, this is a lot of powerful energy on you. It's like the spotlight lights on Libra, right? So what's happening here is that um, you could really be being noticed in your career. Maybe you're having the office party or you're retired and you're being acknowledged for volunteer work in some way, shape or form, whatever it is. It's also a time where even though something has to be ended, acknowledged or adjusted, what could be the adjustment is that you're being acknowledged with this particular um, full moon. Maybe you're offering something up for consideration. I would tell you in your career life, if you've been hiding this particular full moon, maybe trying to push that out of the way, it's like, nope, you're, you've got a talent, you've got a skill, I need you to stop hiding and bring this to the, the surface. Now, We've got the sun moving into Capricorn, which is just the opposite of your 10th house. It's your fourth house. So this full moon plus that sun also makes me think that you could be having some kind of adjustment to your home zone because the sun says, here I am, recognize me. I want to be seen here. I want to be known here. So maybe you're relocating for work. Maybe you're starting to work from home. Maybe you are, you get some kind of assistance or help or a mentor or somebody in a position of authority maybe helps you in your career or with a property situation, something like that. These two energies working like this are going to work in tandem to try and bring some shift to these two particular areas of your world. And here's the idea. With that fourth house energy being in Capricorn, it's saying, hey, I need you to take responsibility for this area of your life. I need you to level this area up. So where the sun is at, you're trying to level up. But I tell you what, if you are out there um, advocating for your promotion, that is definitely taking the old bull by the horns and leveling up, right? So whatever it's looking like, for you this month, Libra. I hope it is good stuff. Please keep me posted in the comment section down below. Let me know what's happening. How are these energies manifesting for you? Where are they manifesting for you in your chart? And if you're not quite sure, check out the blog because they do show you how to identify where these things are in your chart, okay? All right, you guys, I love you so much. I hope you have a beautiful December. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will sure see you soon, okay? Bye.